and welcome back again. <laughs> Time flies when you see interesting content and you learn from it. We will also begin our last study visit of today, which will be about the Smart Port of Oulu. The aim of the Port Oulu Smarter Digital project is to develop and promote utilization of modern port digitalization between Port of Oulu customers and actors. And before I invite our guests in, let's watch a short video about the Port of Oulu. Now joining me on the stage is Mira Juola, Finance and Port Digitalization Manager from the Port of Oulu. Welcome, Mira. Thank you, Simo. We saw a really exciting video about the Port of Oulu, and now I would like to give the floor to you to explain a bit more about what Port of Oulu and Smart Port of Oulu actually is. Thanks. Okay, so, so great opportunity to have, have to tell about our digitalization path and our digitalization project called Port Oulu Smart. And uh, what we are doing in this digitalization project is about, it's all about uh, building up this uh, port data cloud-based platform. And we have applications to collect and share the data from that platform. So, so basically they are our digital twin uh, and mobile application. 
And all this uh, data collecting and sharing requires this digital, digital port infrastructure. All these sensors, cameras, uh, network devices that are actually transferring the data. And this all is done by us, a neutral host, uh, Port Oulu Limited. Uh, we are the, in the role of a, a, a port infrastructure developer. And as we have this uh, you know, traditional role as a physical developer in, in infra infrastructure. So on top of that, we have started to develop this digital infrastructure as well. And all this is enabling us as a port authority to provide new type of di digital services for the port ecosystem partners. And who are they? We could take a look at uh, our next slide about uh, our ecosystem list. Uh, all the all the partners that who are working and, and operating on our area, which are Steve Doring operators, their subcontractors, we have all these visiting uh, trucks, trains and vessels, we have agencies and shipping companies, uh, all the maritime operators such as uh, piloting, towing and ice breaking. And, and even safety and security operations. We have a different type of area maintenance and waste management operators, construction projects, uh, and, and in even other smaller parts, including all these uh, emergency and environment authorities who are very interested in what's happening on our area. And we even have this Nuottarasaari industrial er area behind the fence and, and with whom we are very closely collaborating with, for example, in, in uh, security related uh, matters. And then when we add up into this uh, sum of organizations, all our ICT partners, there are kind of huge group of companies and parties together uh, uh, building up this entity. And and why are we doing this? Uh, it's all about uh, our end customers' benefits, uh, cargo owners whose items are going through our area. So basically their logistic benefits are the main goal for us to improve. And we see that uh, when all these uh, parties, you know, when they function very well together, that is how we can improve the overall performance of our port. And the next slide is, is all about our digitalization strategy in a big picture. We have created this vision for this development. Uh, it's shown on top of this picture. And, and then there are, there are all these drivers, our targets. What are we uh, trying to ch achieve with this development work? We are very much improving the efficiency, the reliability, visibility uh, of, of all these logistics chains going through our area, uh, meaning traffics and cargo chains. And then obviously safety and security um, uh, topics, very interesting and, and, and in important for us as a port authority. We have responsibility for all the workers and, and visitors on our area. And then obviously all this sustainability and uh, environmental uh, topics, very important for the, for example, for the forest industrial uh, companies, mining industry companies, they are more and more interested in even what's happening on the logistic chains of their products. And then we even have this uh, uh, driver to, you know, be profiled as this visionary uh, development and, and very uh, future oriented and, and, and brave digital port who is looking, for, uh, to, looking forward to utilize these new modern uh, technologies in, in a very, very agile way. And then uh, actually these uh, enablers for this development is, is the cooperation model between all those parties shown in the earlier slide. Because we see that uh, none of us can do anything alone. So, so basically it's all about collaboration. And that is something that we've been practicing for, for three or four years now and it's, it's very effective. And then uh, these modern local data network solutions. We, 
we discovered in the very early phase of this uh, digitalization path uh, that we do have very large amount of data to be transferred, uh, to collect and, and share. So, so we need to have very effective uh, modern network so, so, uh, solutions locally on our area. And that is when we um, decided as a port authority to invest on this uh, private LT mobile network for about two years ago. Uh, and that is something that it's, is very interesting for other um, industrial sites or other ports. And, and we've had some very interesting visitors uh, r related to this uh, private LT network. So we, we are selling the capacity of this network for, for the port operators. So, so it is something that we'd, we have achieved this monetizing uh, success in it. So, so it's very uh, in a business model way, it's an in interesting solution. And then actually these projects are much related to these traffic and cargo flows. We are uh, collecting information and data about all these uh, uh, traffics and cargo flows coming into our area. Uh, we, for example, collect uh, access permits information, we uh, schedule information and that sort of thing. We give video instructions uh, in advance when, when the truck driver is coming in and, and that sort of thing that can be do in advance when, when starting to enter the area. And then this this topic also is all about these uh, actual uh, gate operations, you know, uh, taking video shootings about the container on a gate area, checking out uh, who is the driver, does he have every, everything okay with him, he has no any, you know, unfamiliar, uh, uh, you know, co partners with him or, or that so is, is there is there any collision in in uh, containers and leaks that sort of things and then when the gate actually opens and we uh, enter the area we come to that center a little boat here which is all about uh, our port area you know inner performance and we have there this very ambitious goal on visualizing all that's happening on our, on our area in this virtual model digital twin of ours. So basically, in as real time as possible, we want to you know, build up virtual port of, of our board area. And yes, all this data about traffic flows and, and add it up with the uh, area performance and what's happening on the area, we see that we can provide new services for, for all these uh, ecosystem partners. And we, if we take a look at the architecture, it's a rough picture drawing in next slide. Uh, how our this big picture is, you know, kind of built up. In the middle of this picture, we have this uh, uh, cloud-based data hub, which is built actually on Microsoft Azure uh, public cloud uh, tools. And then we have all these uh, data sources listed on the left side of this picture, uh, from which we are bringing in data into this data hub. And they are operative system, ongoing operative systems, uh, ourselves and our companies on the area. And then we are utilizing open data, for example, uh, vessel call data, um, ice data from, about vessel location, uh, trains on a map, and even uh, weather condition data and that sort of thing. And then we have more uh, local sensors, which are bringing in information about the cargo handling, uh, weather condition conditions and even from these network status as, as mentioned earlier, very important. And then we have this huge entity of uh, tracking all these moving objects on our area, the ones that are already there, the equipment, but also the visiting ones. So it's kind of large, large uh, topic. We want to identify, we want to give them uh, navigation uh, instructions and we want to surveil the, them uh, in a very uh, effective way so that we can, you know, imp 
improve the safety issues. And then uh, video analytics obviously very um, utilized and, and beneficial uh, technology to you know collect data in a restricted area like like we are and then we are utilizing our new mobile application to collect user information about the visits for example uh, or safety reports or that sort of things and then we even have these more static documents um, which uh, for example uh, waste instruction and that sort of thing uh, construction modeling that need to be you know transport for the end users in a very effective way so that that is where we call you utilize this m files finish a document management uh, system and we have built up these apis into this data hub and then on the right side of this picture is the way to utilize this data and share so as mentioned a mobile application and digital twin which is a very um, well visualized 3D model or it can be also in a 2D model if for example navigation purposes uh, these are the very two uh, you know applications to share this data but uh, this icon of uh, analytics is something that is very I would say the future value lies in it how to measure up and, and you know find the correlations and KPIs about all you know combining all this data and you know uh, uh, visualizing the big, big picture where are the bottlenecks for example when talking about uh, area utilization on container field utilization and or where can we you know optimize for example our area utilization or what kind of uh, can we for example how long does it take for a truck to visit our area and, and how many kilometers are, are they driving in the area and that sort of thing and we want to pro provide this data for for all these uh, ecosystem partners listed earlier Yes, and we see that there is huge, huge potential in uh, utilizing historical data. And then obviously there are uh, certain use cases related to security about real-time data and all these predictions and simulations and, and planning tools which are bringing in by, by collecting this data. So that is something that we see is, is going to be, be very beneficial and first we would like to show a little video about our digital twin and uh, it this video is presenting some of the use cases that we uh, we are you know planning or already using this this data to be visualized and is it like Okay, so here the video is representing some of the use cases in which we are, we are utilizing this uh, very much platform, it's data platform for, for a real-time data. And shown here are some of the examples of, of use cases. So as you can see, we have this 3D model uh, out of the port area in, and here are, for example, we can plan the pipelines underneath the ground surface and we can also see uh, underneath the ice and snow as we have here in Finland. 
here is an example of a sensor, crane sensor providing heat map, heat map data about uh, container operations and we can close, closely look at, at the effectiveness of these port operations. And this model even knows how the sun is, you know, coming up and, and going down on our all area. We can, uh, you know, plan and simulate different type of uh, lightning solutions. And, and as the lightning is the most ener energy consuming uh, service for us as, as a port authority, it's very useful to have this kind of planning tool. And then we can uh, optimize and, and plan different type of camera angles. And even if there was a camera indeed, you could uh, push the icon and watch the stream if you had the access management. For, for that camera stream. Yes, and as shown here, we want to be able to, uh, you know, track and contact all these uh, trucks and trains and, and working machines that are on our area. We want to know how to contact them, for example, in, in case of emergency or, or any kind of that. And we want to be able to, uh, you know, provide this information in a very in different type of end devices as shown in this last use case. So that's basically uh, the con content of our area. And if we take a look at the very last slide of ours, uh, it, uh, it kind of summarizes the Port of All, Port All Smarter project uh, and and how we are doing this. Uh, this is very important to us. As we are this multi-operational area and ecosystem ourselves, we, want, we, we have decided also to build up this digital entity in the same way. So actually we, uh, we are trying to avoid any kind of vendor or technological lockings. And, and this is done by utilizing and collaborating with several uh, different uh, ICT companies as well as with the research and academic partners. And we are very much trying to find the best partners uh, and take small projects, small steps and, and learn from them and, and find the best partners indeed. And this context of our, we have uh, some of the frames here it's all about this multi-tenancy. Uh, it's very uh, cyber secure and, and critical infrastructure that we have in the port area. So very crucial to have very good cyber security. We want to be able to scale up these, these solutions. We have these harsh conditions. And, and then when, when building up in a way like this, we see that we have control over this connectivity solutions locally, or all this equipment, if any camera or sensor is malfunctioning, we have the uh, opportunity to, you know, fix it up as we own the devices. Uh, we are building this platform uh, and, and these uh, end user applications of ourselves, And that is all done because we want to, you know, have the ownership on data, which we see is the kind of the value of and the currency of all all this so so this is basically all that we are doing at the moment thank you mira it sounds absolutely fantastic futuristic and fascinating i would say um, if we go into the discussion right now i think i would like to extend on some of the points that you already mentioned in the presentation um, as we saw uh, there is an innovation ecosystem that you work in where public organizations research institutions such as the universities and then private sector companies seem to work in complete harmony so could you tell us from a knowledge management perspective i think this is something that interests the city representatives uh, on the other side of the screen. How have you been able to so successfully work in such a multidisciplinary and diverse environment? Well, that is one, one good question indeed. Um, I would like to say that uh, from the very beginning of our Port Olo Smarter project, we are 
we have been kind of open about what we are doing. So, so basically, uh, in our own ecosystem, between uh, our own port operators and visitors and, and customers, so, so we've been very open about uh, uh, questioning them. What is what is the information that you require? What would be beneficial for you? And what kind of digital services would you like to have from the port authority? And then when when uh, we have these very fruitful negotiations and discussion with them. We've tried it. We've tried to, you know, be very open about these challenges to the ICT companies, all these research uh, organizations. That please uh, tell us what to do with these challenges uh, and sort of trying to collect them into the into one place. And then uh, it's all about obviously cooperation and collaboration between so so be be just be open about the challenges and uh, and and kind of i would like to uh, uh, you know encourage to be very uh, specific about the use cases so it's very easy for the outsider companies or organizations to, you know kind of grab into it. Exactly, okay. Mm. So this is a subject that we've touched upon already, so there's a lot of trust and mm. open dialogue between the different actors, right? Yes. So there's also one, um, let's say, the one of the more challenging aspects of knowledge management is continuous improvement. I'm thinking that you have a lot of data, a lot of actors there, so there must be, are there any challenges in making sure that continuous development improvement is happening constantly and how do you manage that? Yes, well I think it's all about taking small enough, you know, steps. So, so basically we want to um, Tell, tell, and and do in a different lines, sort of small steps uh, towards these uh, even bigger, you know, visions, and then at the same time think about what we are doing this week or next week or this spring, so that we can, you know, get something <laughs> actually done yeah. and 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 have that service, for example, in that in that uh, mobile application, that function functionality. So so basically, it's all about. Uh, you know, cutting, cutting things into small enough pieces. And then when you talk about, uh, you know, this uh, data sensitivity, uh, I, would, I would like to, uh, I, we don't want to be blind for the fact that uh, logistics is very competitive, mm -hmm. uh, 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 you know, business. And there is lots of sensitive data, for example, related to customer, affairs or cargo context so so that is something that we've decided to you know we can provide for the uh, for example port operator or our end customer we can provide the uh, you know solution to bringing in that information as well mm -hmm. but on the other hand we have we have started from this non sensitive data which is basically the easier bit the easier bit it's, it's a lot easier <laughs> <laughs> you know we are basically collecting information about what we can go to the port and s see what's going on mm. there where where are the, all the trucks going and and who is coming in and that's that sort of thing and what is the condition on the area and that sort of thing so and we see that, that even this data can be used in a very effective way Sounds absolutely wonderful and very concrete examples of how you manage such a huge amount of data. And that is also one of the key words in our discussion today, data. Uh, you said in the presentation that data is the currency of the future, but sometimes data is being looked at from a very one-sided perspective. So I would like to ask how and what kind of data have you been collecting in Port Oulu? Yes, it's a good question. Actually, in my presentation, there was, uh, you know, listed of all these uh, uh, data sources. But uh, as mentioned, we've ha we ha we have started with a kind of data that is undoubtable. Mm -hmm. So it's all about location, time stamps, certain uh, IDs such as right register plates or container IDs. Such a such a thing that you know you mm. can you can watch and 
see see yeah, <laughs> what's with happening your own eyes. With, <laughs> with your own eyes and, and it's undoubtedly mm -hmm. so so that is something that we for example uh, uh, blockchain technology and and we've tried to learn that sort of thing and what, what is the easiest way to start to collect that data and to utilize and to combine it into KPIs and, and that sort of thing. What kind of uh, uh, diagrams do you get? And you know, you need to be very creative, I would say. <laughs> yeah, and very and also very concrete. So very, very clear steps of what to do and when. Yes. And so on. Small steps and very simple. Find the most simple way and most the most small data part. Mm -hmm. And, and utilize in a most simple way. So that's where you get your first results. <laughs> wow, and that's where the work starts. You also mentioned that you do collect a lot of sensitive data. Has this created any challenges from the perspectives of data management and or sharing information, let's say, with authorities, for example? Yeah. Uh, uh, well, obviously, we need to be very uh, I would say careful, but, but, but uh, you know, plan very well cyber security issues mm -hmm. and this sensitive data. So it's all about access management. Uh, it's all about uh, creating uh, this sort of, for example, this cloud environment. You need to be, you know, able to, for the ICT uh, supplier to tell what kind of parties are going to utilize this data. Who, who, who can see what and who can not definitely so 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 you need to be kind of open from the very first uh, planning phase and and plan very carefully mm -hmm. and even there these small steps help because uh, as we are not bringing in this huge amount at, at the same time but but when we you know kind of start to collect some data mm -hmm. and then it, that is when we you know, go very carefully through who is, you know, authorized to see this data, utilize it, and what's happening, for example, location data of this working machine. Mm -hmm. uh, for uh, security purposes, everyone should see it, where it goes, and, and when it's uh, visualized in a digital twin. But after that, where, where has it been? How many kilometers has it done? Where, what's the route? and that sort of thing. It's, it's not something that the, these, for example, port operators want to share with each other because they are competing with each other. Exactly. So, so, so at the, uh, in a real time, it's, it's public, but it, when the time stamps gets old, then it belongs only to the eyes of, of port operator. So there's a fine balance between timing and when something is public and so on. Yes. Okay, sounds very wonderful. We already saw a little glimpse of the future of Port Oulu, but in your own words, what does the future hold for Port Oulu? Well, we want with these digital services, we want to, you know, be able to, you know, uh, increase our role in, in these end customers uh, logistic flows. Mm -hmm. So so what we as a logistic hub we want to be uh, we want to provide this data and, and uh, that our end customers can utilize for their end customers. Mm -hmm. For example a mining company in Finland who has Chinese customers so and they are responsible for for them to you know provide the information about their uh, activities here in Finland and also about the logistics same. So we we see that this is going to be competitive advantage for us as a port of all. We want them to choose our port in the future as well and that is what we are doing. We are you know increasing the amount of data that we are providing for them so you know making sure they don't want to utilize any other for example truck truck transports or train transport, but instead they are choosing, choosing our, our port over and over again. Yeah, and why wouldn't they? Because it's so futuristic and it <laughs> seems that, you know, you cracked the code of future digital ports, definitely. Amira, uh, we've, we've had a conversation where we talked about data, knowledge management and so on. Joining us are 
almost 300 people from 50 different European cities. What would be your message to the viewers on the other side of the screen who might be thinking, maybe I want to digitalize my own city's port, or maybe they're looking for collaboration with you? What would you like to say to our viewers? Well, first of all, I would like I would like to encourage all, all of us to, to think about the possibilities and opportunities that digitalization, how the digitalization can benefit our organization. And what is the smallest thing that you can do to you know, enhance the situation? For example, today or tomorrow or mm -hmm. next week. And, and start uh, planning, uh, you know, create the vision, the big picture. But on the other hand, think very carefully what to do, you know, Mm. What are the first step, steps and what would be the most beneficial f for our and and not to not so much to look uh, at uh, any you know specific technologies but to think about these current processes or bottlenecks or what sh what 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 is difficult for example in your own organization how how what kind of technology or application could you know ease it up a bit so uh, and I would like to underline the fact that this, our digitalization path has been a very, uh, it's a learning process mm. and it's, it's, it's very exciting to, you know, learn more about it and not, it's not so much about whether you know about technology or not. There are people and companies to help you with that, but we be open with your challenges and, and invite uh, basically anyone who is interested in discussing on these topics, you know, collaborate and discuss with the companies and people and in seminars and, and online seminars like this. And, and I think that, uh, that that's, that's a good way to start. So a, the key to success is a combination of practical steps, then a bigger vision and finally collaboration openly with different actors. Very well summarized. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mira. It's been a pleasure to have you here, and I wish all the best of luck and success in your future endeavors and with Port of Olu, of course. It was a pleasure to have you in our discussion. Thank you so much, Mira. You all. Thank you, Simon. And now we will take a f little break of eight minutes, and when we come back, we'll be summing up today's takeaways with Peetu Virkkala. So stay tuned, and we'll see you soon.